Hi everyone. Hope that you are all well. It's so good to have you here today. I just wanted to come on for a bit to talk to you about a subject that's been close to my heart for a while now, which is mental health. And I also wanted to give a bit of a testimony about God's goodness and faithfulness to me over the past three or four months, especially. Um, I, I really can't tell it all, to be honest. <laughs> And this video will probably be part one of several, maybe two, maybe three. I don't know. We'll see what God decides. But um, I hope that it encourages someone and at least gives them a bit of hope that God is a faithful God and he's looking out for you. Um, if you see me looking down for <laughs> every now and again, it's because I have my notes. I just didn't want to forget, you know, to tell you the good parts. <laughs> There are some sad parts in there as well, but um, as I said, I am I am grateful to God for his mercies towards me. You know, if you know me, you know that I can be a little bit of a crier. <laughs> so I'm going to try and do this without too many tears. Um, I can't promise no tears, but um, yeah, pray for me <laughs> as I do this. Um, I think for the past two years, every one of us can say that it's really been tough. Uh, the pandemic came out of nowhere. I don't think any of us were prepared for it and what, what it would mean uh, to, to any of us. But right on the crust of the pandemic starting here in the UK, I moved into a new position because my supervisor had left abruptly. Uh, from the position and it was open and we were going into this new phase of furlough and all these things and um, I stepped up to the plate and I said to my plant manager um, you know I'd love an opportunity to be able to take us forward in this I don't know what is what's going to happen at the end of it but you know I'm willing to to step in for the time being to see where it would go um, I had to literally hit the ground running. There were bits and pieces of the job that I was, you know, picking up along the way. Uh, my sister, who's in HR, was was um, <laughs> a big help to me um, when I had my questions. So I would, um, you know, visit the University of Google and YouTube to see what else, along with, of course, my own research. Um, eventually, I got the opportunity to undertake a master's degree in um, HR and employment law. So I'm still busy with that at the moment, um, writing my dissertation. But um, as, again, I see I can, I, can only <laughs> I can only give it all to God. So um, I, as the year turned over into 2021, I could feel myself, you know, getting a bit tired and, and worn. Uh, because I had, I had been working some really long hours. I would do my stint at the office and then still come home and log on at nights. So my body was, was really starting to object <laughs> to the long days. And um, I, I just, you know, ignored it as I usually do because uh, Merlet keeps going. <laughs> Uh, my sister calls me the Energizer Bunny because she says uh, that I do so much uh, for not just for my family, but for people uh, that I come in contact with. And, and that's always been um, me and, and who, I, who I've been over the years. And I pride myself in, in wanting to help people. Um, so I just I just kept going my, my duties at church and um, in the different groups that I was in and a part of uh, my friendship groups uh, people relied on me so I just I just kept doing what what Merlette would do and just you know carried on um, by the time I got to November of, of 2021 I I knew that something was definitely wrong because I struggled to get out of bed and um, you know my daughter put it this way she said she said, um, Mom, you started your days later and later. And and in fact, some days you, you didn't even make it out of bed. I think about it now and um, 
I say to myself, that must have been scary for them as well. Because mommy's up at the crack of dawn, has everything sorted by the time they wake up a lot of mornings and, um, you know, ready to go out the door. Um, but for, for them to see me in that situation, it, it, it must have been scary for them. Um, one day in, in November as well, I remember waking up with a really bad headache. It, it was mainly to, to the right side of my head and um, I tried everything. I, I tried going back to sleep. I tried uh, taking medication, painkillers for it. I, I tried drinking, uh, you know, an excessive amount of water. Everything that they say to try, I tried. Uh, by the next day, it had traveled down into my neck, so I knew I was like, mm, uh, "This is this is a bit much. This is not a usual migraine or even just a headache. Uh, something, something was definitely up." So I said to my husband, "I said um, maybe we should check my pressure, my blood pressure," and um, we did, and it was <laughs> definitely way too high for for where it needed to be. Um, we were a little shaken by it and we, we started to pray about it and um, if you're in the UK you know that it's been difficult to get in to see your GP you know if you if, if it's not a video call it's a telephone call but they don't physically see you um, unless it's a dire situation and I remember calling the doctor the following day and saying to saying to them, I, I really need to get in to see a GP, um, you know, because my blood pressure is is too high and I I need some some help. Um, I think that's when the nurses finally you know kicked in together and said, okay, um, we'll have someone call you within the hour. And um, my GP called eventually and she said to me. Um, tell me what your readings have been over the past few days and I told her and she was like whoa she's like no you need to get here now um, let's see what's going on <laughs> I got to the practice and the nurse took my pressure and um, she looked at me you know rather strangely and she's like she's like how did you get here I said well my husband brought me and um, he's waiting outside she's like oh um, she said, are you okay? I said, yes. She said, are you f experiencing anything right now? Um, by then the headache had subsided, so I didn't feel anything in particular. Um, but she was just concerned that I was having a proper conversation with her and my pressure was that high, you know? <laughs> um, so they wanted to start me on medication right away. And, um, you could just imagine my reluctance. Nobody ever wants to start medication for for some of those you know uh types of diseases because it's almost as if it's a a death sentence <laughs> you know you go on and you can hardly get off um unless you really make some radical life changes um you know you could you could stay on it for life so i had my doubts about it and you know and we, anyway we went and we picked up the prescription but for several days we mulled over it we prayed and we asked god to lower my pressure because you know we didn't want uh, medication to be <laughs> to be it but um while we while we looked into it we did some research on the side effects and looking at the first one it said um this medication can cause damage to severe damage to an unborn child and at the time I, I wasn't pregnant but um, my husband and I had recently decided to try for our third child <laughs> you know just just to, just to round it up because it's something we'd always talked about we'd always talked about having three children so we said okay if things are settled down now let's let's try and um it was it was rather i suppose shocking to me um that that would be one of the the first side effects that i read and that's because a month before that had happened i i experienced a miscarriage and um i was devastated 
And if you know my story, you know that I'm not even supposed to be pregnant because of previous previous illnesses. But um, God was gracious enough to give us our two daughters, and um, I was very early. I know I know that it's it it probably wouldn't have read on a, on a test or anything like that if I had tested because I'm my my cycle is pretty pretty um, standard, but. I ovulate after most women. I ovulate on day 20 rather than, you know, most women on day 14, between 14 and 16. I um, mean, I know this because I, I tracked before, you know, especially when we were having our two daughters. And it's, main it's maintained that, um, you know, over the years. I remember the morning I, I, I realized what was happening. I, I tried to compose myself because my children were in the house with me and my husband and um, I didn't know what to do. But anyway, I I tried to pull myself together. I came back to bed because um, it was early in the morning. I came back to bed and I, I just burst into tears. Curtis was so um, surprised. And in fact, I think I think I woke him up by bursting into tears. Um, and he was like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I, I, I expressed it to him, you know, what had happened. And, and he said, are you sure? I said, yes, I, I, I know what's happening to my body. So um, it was a bit rough to now be at a point where I needed help again with my blood pressure being that high. And, and to see that the side effects would definitely, you know, derail my plan and our plan. Of having a third child and I, I said God do you even love me do you even love me because I feel some days like you don't I was so angry at God I was angry because I felt like everything I ever wanted you know my chance to give my husband a son um, you know, to have my third child, just, just to have something I simply wanted <laughs> was being taken away from me. And, um, I, I know now, of course, that God, and I always knew that God, God that's not the way God works. God doesn't not love us. <laughs> in fact, he gives us so many uh, scriptures in his word to to tell us differently and to assure us differently that he loves us and and he's looking out for us. Um, but in that moment, it was hard to see. I, I had gone into a state of depression after that October miscarriage and um, now again dealing with, with um, you know, my high blood pressure. I was also, you know, in the in the middle of doing several assignments for for school for the master's degree and um it was it was really a rough time just going back and forth between the different things I, I was hardly over one thing before i i had to um deal with another i i was really depressed and um i know it's hard to even express it and to even admit it because how how could this child of God be depressed? How could this spirit filled woman, this 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 worship leader, the bishop's daughter, and and all the hats that I wear, how could she be depressed? How could she be having a mental breakdown? And I I I can admit to that now because I know the signs. And and while I in the moment I didn't even want to admit it to myself, you know, after processing it and looking into the situation, I I know now that that that's what it was depression and a mental breakdown kind of simultaneously so I was knocked out I came into the Christmas season and I didn't even want to see anyone and when I did see them you know I forced a smile my, my smiles felt like lies <laughs> I felt like I was lying every time you know and um, people tell me all the time of, of how beautiful my smile is and I, I want to I wanted to maintain that but um, I was dealing with so much. All within there, I was still um, doing ministry assignments, and, you know, talking to people when they called, and and being Merlette. I, I I didn't I didn't know who else I could be at that point. 
<laughs> but um but you know I look back and I say it was a it was a really dark place to be in and while I felt like I had no one to be able to you know discuss it with because I felt like like if I said it 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 would make me look weak I I honestly felt like a failure as a woman you know um miscarrying and then and then having to deal with high blood pressure and everything that came along with that it, it just got to be too much and I, I withdrew, I withdrew from everything, I withdrew from church, I withdrew from even my family um, and I know they're going to watch this in, in shock probably but I just, I just want to assure you that I'm good, I'm, I am so much better, the Holy Spirit has witnessed to me, you know, um, through the word of God and um, brought back so many things to my remembrance. I remember um, hearing my dad say several years ago that um, what I do when I when I teach the Word of God, you know, ministers spend years in seminary to learn. Um, so I know I've been gifted to teach the Word of God, and I know that this all of this was a an attack um, of the enemy and um, trying to derail God's plan for my life. But I I am assured that God was with me every step of the way. I want to assure you today that he's with you as well. He says in his word in Matthew 11 verses 28 to 30, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Lord wants to take your burden. He, he wants to take your burden away from you. Uh, there were moments when even Jesus himself had to go aside to rest or to pray. Um, so it means that it's okay. It's okay to look after yourself. It's okay to rest. It's okay to withdraw when you feel like you need to to be refreshed in the presence of God. And it's okay to set boundaries and tell people, you know what, I'm not available today. I'm, 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 I'm taking care of myself because what I've learned is um, you can't minister from an empty cup. <laughs> your cup. Your cup has to be overflowing. For not just and not just filled but overflowing for you to be able to minister a lot of us are trying to minister from empty cups or half filled cups and you know some of our cups are even so so empty we can't even see the dregs at the at the bottom of the of the cup um, because we just keep giving and giving and giving and and as long as we're giving people are taking <laughs> And it's it's not it's like nothing to them. So look after yourselves. That's that's my encouragement to you today. Um, whether you're in ministry or not, or just listening to me um, and this video, just know that it's okay. It's okay to take care of you first. Uh, there's a reason why the airlines say put your oxygen mask on first before you help someone else because you need to be able to breathe before you can help someone else breathe properly. So look after yourself today. One of the things I know that got me through was um, my husband Curtis, he, such a powerful man of God. He's quiet, reserved, <laughs> but I'm telling you, when he's, when he's in this house sometimes, I, I see the Holy Spirit on him. I remember one day in particular, I was sharing with him how I felt about you know the whole situation and, and and being so bogged down with with, with everything um, he walked up to me and he held my head in his hands and he he commanded clarity in my thoughts and and that and that my thoughts and my mind would line up with the purpose of God and on my life and and that I would be be um, cognizant of everything the Holy Spirit was saying to me and and through me and that I would be able to fulfill my purpose you know I, I I felt in that moment that something broke over me and I can only say I thank God for him and for all that he's doing in his life as he leads us as a family 
I just want to pray. I hope you don't mind uh, me praying for you before I leave you today. Um, so if you would bow your heads with me. Our Father in heaven, we come before you now acknowledging that you are Lord of all and there is nothing too hard for you to do for us. We want to say thank you for being such a faithful God to us and for taking such good care. There is no one else like you and we are grateful. Help us today to truly cast our cares on you, knowing that you are more than capable to take care of them. Help us through the Holy Spirit to be assured that you will never leave us nor forsake us. We say thank you and we pray this in no other name but your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope that you have found some glimmer of hope in this video today. I pray that you will be encouraged. I don't know what's going to happen <laughs> with this, this channel and what God is, is doing, but I am praying that he, no matter what, would have his way, have his way in me, in my life and on this channel. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and, and like the video, share the video with someone that could use an uplifting word uh, um, today. It's, it's hard out there. Christian, non-Christian, believer, non-believer, it doesn't even matter anymore. We're all feeling the same things and it's it's just good to know that we can trust in a God who is faithful and who is everlasting and who remains in control no matter the chaos around us. We love you here on this channel. Thank you for watching the video. Thank you for staying with me this long. Didn't mean for it to be this long, but God bless you and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.